So today we're going all the way to Singapore, diving into their world of philanthropy, mm -hmm. and specifically the work of Mr. To Soon Huat and the organization he leads. Right. Oh, yeah. It's a it's a really fascinating story yeah. about how philanthropy and healthcare kind of come together. Yeah. Especially in the context of Singapore. Definitely. And it's not just like your average charity we're talking about here. Right. I mean, this is an organization with over a century of history. Yeah. So for those of us who might not know, what exactly IS on our so AA or Shanji Medical Institution, if you were to translate it, okay. has been around since nineteen oh one. Wow. Um, so if you can picture it, early 20th century Singapore, yep. a major hub for immigrants. Right. And this organization really steps in to provide free traditional Chinese medicine consultations. Wow. And low cost treatment really focused on helping those struggling Chinese immigrants. 1901. Yeah. That's That's older than aspirin. It is. And speaking of which... You mentioned traditional Chinese medicine. I feel like everyone listening has at least heard of acupuncture or mm. cupping. Mm. But, like, what's its significance in Singapore even today? It's still huge EE. Yeah. I mean, TCM is, like, woven into the cultural fabric here. Perfectly. Yeah, it's not just some alternative form of medicine. Right. It's a whole approach to health and well-being. Interesting. What's really interesting is that before World War II, TCM in Singapore was mainly kept afloat by philanthropy. Wow. Which just shows how important it was to the community. Yeah, that's incredible. It yeah. really speaks to the kind of community spirit. Right. Right. I mean, you can almost picture it. You can. This haven for people who might not have had any other access to healthcare. Absolutely. Yeah, well, and their early days really do paint this picture mm -hmm. of resilience, compassion. Yeah. This commitment to helping the most vulnerable. It's really. And this kind of leads us to this pivotal moment in his journey, yeah. which is the year 2002, when Mr. Tosun Wat kind of comes onto the scene. Ah, yes. Yes. Mr. Tosun Wat, I mean, where do we even begin with this guy? I know, right? His list of accomplishments, he's dedicated over two decades to mm -hmm. eventually becoming there full time. And get this, unpaid chairman. Wow. Yeah. And the awards. I know. The Public Service Medal. Right. The public service star? Those are huge honors. Those are massive. Yeah. In Singapore, those awards are, they're not given out lightly. Right. They really reflect deep respect and recognition within society. Right. It means that you've gone above and beyond for your community. Wow. And to think, he does it all as a volunteer, essentially. It's incredible. It really is. So yeah. picture this. Okay. Okay. Mr. Toe, he takes over as chairman in 2008 at right. the time, has a whopping... Four staff members. Four staff members. Four. That's it. Fast forward to 2020. Mm. They have 120 staff. Wow. Across 13 branches. Yeah. Serving 1,400 people every single day. Every day. That's not just growth. That's an explosion. It is. It's phenomenal growth to give you a sense of the scale. Okay. Between 2014 and 2020 alone, they served 2.3 million patients. Wow. And filled over 4.4 million herbal medicine prescriptions. Those numbers are mind-boggling. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, and it's clear that he had a vision, right? He did. It wasn't just about keeping things the same. Right. But it wasn't just about expanding their reach either, right? Exactly. And this is where I think things get really interesting. Okay. Mr. Toe talks about addressing the, and I'm quoting here, loneliness of the soul. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? So Mr. Toe's a big believer in a holistic approach to well-being. Okay. He recognizes that true well-being yeah. goes beyond just treating the physical stuff. Right. He saw this profound need yeah. to address the social and emotional needs of the community too. Yeah. Especially for those who might be experiencing isolation. So how do you how do you even begin to put that into action? So he spearheaded some really innovative initiatives at Ariam Toy. Okay. For example, their uh their woo woo woo. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. I am struggling with that pronunciation a little bit. That's okay. It's a mouthful. Yeah. It's Shunji book sharing session. Okay. Essentially, they just organize these gatherings what? where people can come together, talk about books, share their thoughts, right. connect with others. What a cool idea. It is. It sounds like such a simple way to like combat loneliness. Yeah. And just create that sense of community. Exactly. And it ties in beautifully with Mr. Toe's whole thing about mindfulness yeah. and living in the present. Mm -hmm. 
he often talks about you know finding joy in those everyday moments and yeah connecting with people on a deeper level that's so powerful and makes me think about how we often overlook those simple things right that bring us joy and connection it's so true yeah. absolutely and that was just a, one of many initiatives oh wow that he implemented to promote this holistic well-being that's okay then there's the eula two another pronunciation challenge right this one translates to shanji caring outing caring outing tell me more so picture this they organize these like special outings right. for ep patients. Okay. So they might visit a local attraction, you know, enjoy yeah. a meal together, yeah. or even participate in some kind of recreational activity. Okay. It's all about fostering that social interaction, mm. r reducing those feelings of isolation that some people might be feeling. Right. And just promoting that sense of belonging within the community. That's fantastic. I love that. It goes beyond just, you know, Providing medical care. It does. Because they really get what it means to care for someone. Right. It's about the whole person, and then there's ampule on Okay, another tough one. Ha <laughs> ha. Which translates to Sean G. Caring Haircut. Okay, so I have to admit, free haircuts aren't exactly the first thing I think of when I think healthcare. Right. Yeah, ha <laughs> ha. But it's actually incredibly thoughtful when you think about it. Okay. Many of their patients might be older. Right. Or maybe facing some financial difficulties, you know? Yeah. And something as simple as a haircut yeah. can make a world of difference. For their self-esteem. For sure. And just their overall well-being. Yeah. It's about dignity. It is. Right. Feeling good about yourself even when things are tough. Absolutely. And it speaks to Mr. Toe's philosophy, you know? Well, he often says, when we care for the body, we must also care for the mind and spirit. Yeah. It's this holistic vision of health. Right. that really seems to resonate with the community. It's interesting that you say that because it makes me think about how yeah. Mr. Toe, he doesn't shy away from these big societal topics either. He doesn't. Like I read this quote from him yeah. where he's talking about tolerance, compassion, great love. Mm. And those aren't just nice sounding words. No. Nope. He seems to genuinely believe those are crucial for a well-functioning society. He does. And that's what I think makes his approach so interesting. Yeah. It's like... He's connecting these individual acts of kindness. Right, like the haircuts. Exactly, like providing a haircut, mm -hmm. organizing an outing mm -hmm. to this bigger idea of building a more harmonious, yeah. more compassionate society. Right, because it's about more than just the individual. It is. It's about us all recognizing our shared humanity. Exactly. Taking care of each other. It's like that saying, no one's an island. Exactly. We're all interconnected, right? Yeah, and those connections, they really matter. They do, and I think that message is particularly relevant in Singapore, you know, a yeah. country known for its diversity. Right, right. All the different cultures. Mm -hmm. There's a real emphasis there on social cohesion. Right. And building bridges between uh -huh. different ethnicities. And, and Mr. Toe sees philanthropy as, like, a key part of that. He does. Yeah. Absolutely. He believes that when we help those in need, yeah. no matter their background, mm. it's not just about helping that one person. Right. It's about strengthening the whole community. It's that ripple effect. Exactly. Right? Like when we choose compassion. Yeah. We're contributing to a more compassionate world. Exactly. And this is something he's very passionate about, yeah. especially when it comes to younger generations. Oh, interesting. He really sees them as the future of a compassionate society, you know? So how does he go about, like, inspiring that next generation of givers? Well, first and foremost, he leads by example. Of course. But he also talks a lot about the importance of education, mm -hmm. mentorship. Okay. He believes that by instilling these values in young people, right. values of compassion, social responsibility, yeah. we're giving them the tools to create positive change. It's like planting those seeds of compassion. Exactly. And helping them grow. Yes. What a legacy. But I have to ask. You've painted such a like positive picture, you know. Of course. Of Mr. Toe and his work. Right. Surely there have to be challenges along the way, right? Oh, of course. Running an organization like Earth. Yeah. Yeah. Even with all its success, it's not without its complexities. Like what? What kind of hurdles do they face? Well, like any organization that relies so much on philanthropy, yeah, funding's always going to be a bit of a, a tightrope walk, right? Makes sense. Making sure they've got the resources to keep doing what they do, right? Especially with the demand just growing and growing. Yeah, you can have the best of intentions, but you need to literally keep the lights on. Exactly. Right. And then there's that balance, you know, tradition yeah. on one hand, 
and then keeping things modern. Right. I mean, TCM has been practiced for centuries, right? Yeah. But that doesn't mean it can't change with the times. So are they are they sticking with the exact same herbs and stuff right. from a century ago? I mean, how does that even work? That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. They're dedicated to those core principles. Right. The foundation of TCM, mm -hmm. but they're not afraid to adapt. Okay. They incorporate technology, modern management, all of that. Wow. So they're really bridging that gap then. Exactly. Between the ancient wisdom and what we need today. It's that balance, you know. Yeah. It sounds like a tough thing to get right. It is. It takes real finesse. Yeah. To honor the tradition, but still be innovative. Like they're writing a whole new chapter. They are. In the story of TCM, rooted in history, but with their eyes on the future. And I think that's what makes them so fascinating, especially yeah. in the context of Singapore's healthcare overall. You Why? Know, it's proof that these ancient practices yeah. still so relevant today. It makes you wonder if this model, you know, this mm -hmm. accessible, affordable healthcare, yeah. so intertwined with compassion, that holistic view, mm -hmm. like, could other places learn from this? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And one I think a lot of healthcare providers are asking themselves these days. Yeah. There's this growing understanding globally, I think, yeah. that well-being, it's not just about what your doctor can fix. Right, right, yeah. It's the social, the emotional, even the spiritual. It's about the whole person, not just the symptoms, like you were saying. Exactly, because at the end of the day, we're complex. Yeah. We've got complicated needs. Totally. And sometimes the best thing. Yeah. It might be someone who listens, a community. Or, yeah, a good haircut. Exactly. And that, I think, is the biggest takeaway from Mr. Toe, from Doe's Toe. Okay. It's a reminder that real compassion, it doesn't have limits. Yeah. It's seeing the worth in every single person, no matter what. Wow. When you put it like that, it makes mm -hmm. you want to stand up and clap, you know? <laughs> so as we wrap things up here, what's the one thing yeah. you really hope our listeners take away from this story? You know, I think the best part about Mr. Toe's story yeah. is that it's got something for everyone. And maybe you finish this and you think, I got to learn more about TCM. Right. Or I'm going to go volunteer. Yeah. Or even, you know, even if it's just, I'm going to be a little kinder today. Right. Those small acts of kindness. Yeah. They can make a world of difference. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, on that note, we'll leave you to ponder the incredible work of Mr. Tasun Wa and Onsina. Mm. Until next time, keep on diving deep. <laughs>